This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So we're now going to go through and look at CAPM in a little bit more detail. In the previous video, we just went through that and introduced what CAPM does. So let's just recap in case you've forgotten. Uh, CAPM, or the Capital Asset Pricing Model, is a method of measuring return for the risk that we are faced with as an equity investor. And the risk that we are faced with is a measurement of that systematic risk. Uh, that systematic risk. So if you like that market risk of investing within a stock exchange. So whether that's investing on the London Stock Exchange, uh, the New York Stock Exchange in Wall Street or, or any other recognized stock exchange. The key that we need to look at is we need to look at the return for each individual investment that we either currently hold or if we add an investment to our current portfolio, what level, if you like, of return is that extra investment going to go through there and generators. So we need to look at those investments and look at the level of risk that they have compared to the overall market risk. Because if we have diversified away our portfolio of shares, or so we have between 15 and 20 investments, then surely the level of risk that we are faced with is the same level of risk that there is in the market. OK, so we need to be able to work out uh, what the return will be for our new investment, judging upon its level of riskiness compared to the actual market itself. And that's where we go through there. And we use what is referred to as beta to measure the systematic risk, okay? Because some investments will be equally as risky as the market, so share the same risk profile. Uh, some investments will have more, if you like, risk than others. So therefore, we would demand more of a return. And other investments will have less risk than the market. So therefore, we will require less of a return. Now, it's not just a simple case of saying, well, look, this investment has twice as much risk as the market, so therefore we need double the amount of return. It's not as a direct linear approach as that. It's not as well saying, well, look, uh, if we have half the risk, we then want half of the return. There's just a little bit more to it than that. So what I'm just going to go through and do, just bring in a, a numerical example, OK, uh, that you may wish to go through and play around with. Let's just say that, that we have... the risk-free rate of return is there at 3%. So if I go through and invest in, say, some government bonds or gilts, which, you know, it's a pretty risk-free investment, isn't it? You know, if you invest money with your local government, you should be guaranteed a pretty much constant return, shouldn't we? And, you know, the government shouldn't really go bankrupt, would it? OK, at least you'd, you'd hope not. Though in today's economic climate, you never know. OK. Uh, maybe if you're on the cusp of going bankrupt, you could just print more money. OK, I think a couple of economies have done that in the recent past. OK, uh, but the risk free rate is there at three percent. OK, however, that's just a, a bland, simple investment. You, you want more of a return. So let's just say that that if you invest. On the market. The market rate or the market return. Is there at five percent? Okay. I know it could be a lot more. You'd expect a lot more for investing in the market, but it's just, it's a pretty risk risk. Not can't use the word risk free. There's a lot less risk in this market than maybe in others. Okay. Uh, so what have we got? Well, we're going to go through there and look at three separate scenarios that looks at the level of risk. Okay. Uh, so let's just say that the investment that you have or are looking to buy is as risky as the market. OK, so there is the same level of risk in your investment than there is in the market, the average market returns. OK, so how do we show that in terms of the CAPM formula? Well, the return that we've got. OK. Well, you need to get your risk free rate, don't we? OK, so you're going to get 3%, regardless of how risky the investment is. 
whether it's as risky, more risky, less risky than the market in general, you're going to get yourself 3%. Okay. What we then need to do there is we need to add on a measure of the riskiness of the investment. Okay. So here it's as risky. So the factor that we're going to use is beta factor is going to be 1. But we want the, the premium above the risk-free rate. What additional return do we get for investing in the market than what we do for just investing in government bonds or gilts? Well, the premium that we get, the extra, is 2%. By investing in the market, I don't get 5%. And the 3% from the risk free and get eight. No, 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 no. No, I'm going to get a 5% return by investing in the market. Well, if I know that I'm going to get 3% for investing in government bonds and gilts, I need an extra 2% above the 3% to get me that return on the market. Okay. So you've got effectively the, a premium above what you have the for investing in your risk-free returns. And therefore, because it is as risky, the beta factor that we have is one, okay? So if I do three plus one times five less three, five less three is two, uh, one times two is two, plus three is excellent, five, you've got it, okay? So the return that you get there is 5%, which, which is what we wanted, wasn't it? it, it it's fixed, okay? Uh, let's just say that, that the investment is twice as risky as the rest of the market. Because if that's the case, the return that we're going to go through and get is we want that 3% return. But we don't want twice the market rate. Okay, We don't want 10. You know, we're guaranteed to go through there and get 3% regardless. We just want an extra bit of return for the risk that we are taking and the risk that we are taking is twice as risky an investment as what you see on average in the market so you've got there you get twice that risk premium okay so five less three is two 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 the four plus the three is seven percent and hopefully what you can see there now is that we have an investment that is twice as risky as the rest of the market but it's not just simply twice the five percent average return is it okay to give us ten it's seven and the reason why is because you can't just get double okay the return on the risk-free rate you know, that, that's guaranteed isn't it that, that's not going to change that's pretty much constant okay yeah we need to look at the return you get above that risk-free rate and the return we get above is two percent and the risk is double that okay excellent uh just to finish it off just so you can go through and see it in full let's just say there that the investment is half as risky i'm running out of space let's just go through there and squeeze it over a bit there we go that worked doesn't it and uh, then what you've got there is that the return is going to be three percent and then we add on a return that is half as risky as that as the market. So five less three is two, half of two is one. So that gives me 4%. Again, hopefully that starts to make even more sense now because if you have an investment that's half as risky, you know, the market's giving you 5%. You don't want half of the 5% and give you two and a half. You know, I can get 3% from the risk-free rate of return by investing in government bonds and gilts, can't I? Okay, so therefore you need half of the return premium for investing on the market. Okay, so half of the 2%. Okay, and that essentially is the basis of CAPM and how it works. Okay. Uh, as a formula, you've got it there within your notes over the page. Okay, uh, it looks very fancy, uh, but the return is there equal to RF, which is the risk-free rate, which is what you get from investing in your government bonds and gilts. Okay, uh, you then add beta, so that measures. Remember, beta is a measure.
for the systematic risk. Okay, uh, that's looking good. If you like the the past history uh, of the change in the returns based on the level of risk that was in place at that point in time, and, and it's a long mean weighted average of that level of risk that the business has been faced with. It's not something you're going to have to calculate. There is, if you like, a book of betas that exists. You can just go through there and, and look it up on financial websites such as Bloomberg uh, or the London Stock Exchange or FT. Uh, you will be able to go through there and find beta uh, for a particular chosen company, a measure of the systematic risk. Uh, you then multiply beta by RM minus RF. Remember RM minus RF. I think I referred to it already is the risk premium because you need to be a bit careful. I know that previous example was nice and straightforward, but instead of being given RF and RM and beta to calculate the return, uh, you might be given RF, beta and the risk premium to calculate the return. So you just need to be careful when you substitute in the numbers and we'll see that in a small moment within the examples. Uh, RM is the return from the market. Again, that's an average of the return in terms of dividends and capital growth over the last five to 10 years. Again, it's not something that you'd be expected to calculate, just something that you'd be expected to have an awareness of. Okay, uh, It is given to you in the formula sheet, but if you're looking for that formula within the exam, give up. OK, what's the, what's the point? OK, You're trying to find a little formula like that. If you've done enough question practice, that formula should be second nature. RF plus beta multiplied by brackets RM minus RF and RM minus RF is otherwise known as the risk premium. Excellent. There we go. Fantastic. Uh, just to go through, finish this off. OK. Uh, before we look at the examples in the next video. Uh, just a bit about the bullet points. Uh, if beta is equal to 1, then that's saying that the investment has the same risk as the market. So that's the middle example there. Uh, if an investment has a beta greater than 1, then it is more risky than the market. So here, that's where by beta is greater than one. That is sometimes referred to, if I can spell it right, as an aggressive investment. Okay. Uh, then what you have there, uh, if beta is less than one, then it is less risky than the market. Uh, so that is sometimes referred to as a defensive investment uh, you're pretty much guaranteed constant returns there's not much risk that you face with so in the uk if you invest in say utilities company a gas electricity a water company there's not much risk that you face with there is there okay uh, the consumers will need gas electricity and water at, at specific times within the year okay there could be subtle changes in the weather but that will even out over a long period of time. Obviously, it's, it's a pretty defensive investment. An aggressive one uh, is whereby there is lots of risk within that business. So maybe something like Rolls-Royce uh, that produces airline engines, uh, that used to produce cars, that, that uh, produces nuclear turbines and the like. So there's a lot of risk within that industry uh, based on various factors, okay, such as uh, supply and demand with regards to do people want nuclear energy, uh, are people flying it on planes, you know, that depends upon people's wealth uh, and the factors behind that, doesn't it? Okay, uh, so it's just worth noting those little bits and pieces there. Have a play around with that example, which I have just there, okay? Uh, and then once you've done that, make sure that you know the formula. Write it out a few times to remember it, and then we'll go through there and have a play around with a couple of examples. I'll see you in the next video.